Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to connect a master agent to Arise Phoenix using the updated auto instrumenter um, for Mastra that is located in Open Inference. And so basically we'll set up Phoenix and the Open Inference auto instrumenter. We'll take a quick look at my master agent and then we'll go ahead and run the agent and inspect the traces in Phoenix. And then to finish it off, um, we can go ahead and run some evals using the TypeScript uh, library of Phoenix evals. Let's go ahead and start with the integration pieces. So I've already installed the dependencies for this project, which will include um, Mastra, the Phoenix client, as well as the open inference instrumentation um, for Mastra. I also have my environment configured so that everything knows where Phoenix lives. So basically in my environment file, I've set my Phoenix endpoint, a project name, and as well as my OpenAI um, API key. So if you are running Phoenix locally, it will just be your um, local host um, 6060 or 6006. And then if you are using host Phoenix or Phoenix Cloud, it will be your specific endpoint. And then you would also put in your Phoenix API key. And you'll see those variables again when we go ahead and take a look at the eval script and just throughout the actual project itself. And so the main idea here is that um, Open Inference will plug into our app and automatically kind of instrument our LM calls, tool calls, um, and agents, like everything that's a part of like this agent workflow that we have. And then it'll emit those structured spans. So Phoenix will, de will then ingest those spans um, so that we can actually inspect our traces and then debug our behavior. And like I said, eventually we will run our evals. So now going to my index file, um, we can go ahead and talk about how tracing is actually wired up. So I have just set my auto instrumenter that hooks into my LLM and tool stack. And so, like I said, at the high level, the steps are basically that we can import the actual auto instrumenter. And then if you are using um, multiple frameworks, for example, or if you're using a different model provider or something, you can also go ahead and instrument those as well. So there's auto instrumenters for a bunch of different LLM providers like OpenAI, Anthropic, um, Google, whatever it may be. Um, and so you can also go ahead and install those and set those up as well. And so what this step does basically is that we're going to configure um, an exporter or rise expo exporter such that the traces are actually sent to the Phoenix endpoint. So we have them set as kind of like variables or API keys or, or just like in our environment variables, right? But this is the actual step where we are able to tell the application that this is where um, all of that data basically needs to go. And then we'll pretty much just run our master agent as normal. And so all of the spans for whatever um, will get captured and sent to Phoenix automatically. And now we can take a really quick look at the agent itself before we get it up and running. So this is what our master agent is. It takes in um, a natural language query and then it'll call the tools that we have set to then answer that query. So our agent here is just a movie agent that has three tools, a movie selector tool, a preview summarizer tool, as well as a reviewer tool. And so the main idea is that you can kind of ask the agent to suggest um, a movie based on whatever criteria that you want to pass in. And then it'll essentially use these tools to then come up with a list. I think the list that we have configured right now is a list of five um, by default. And so it'll create five movies um, and suggest them back to you. So I can actually run, I just stopped the server, but I can run npm run dev um, in my terminal to actually uh, start my agent itself. So here um, we can see our agent. And so we can go ahead and run this agent actually a couple of times. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I'm actually running um, Phoenix locally. So I'm just going to set it up in my terminal really quick and just run Phoenix serve. And we'll wait for that. Okay, so basically now that um, Phoenix is up and running, um, we can go ahead and actually start to invoke our, our agent itself. So that's what our agent looks like, like I said. And so I can ask it a question like, I need an animated movie to watch. I'll go ahead and send it in. We can go ahead and see that it's actually using the movie selector tool. So it's come up with um, five examples since that is the default. And the category or genre is animated, which is the criteria that I had passed in. Next is going to look at the reviewer tool and it's basically going to have, um, it's going to look at all the ones that it suggested and rank them highest to lowest. And then lastly, we'll have a actual like summary of the movie just to give back to the users so that they have a little bit more context into what the movie is to then make their decision um, about which to watch. 
So I actually haven't seen any of these movies, um, but they must be really top rated and they're all the animated movies. So this is what um, our agent has suggested for us. Now, when I go ahead and go into, let me reload this page. Yes, now I am in Phoenix. So this is what Phoenix will look like when you um, set it up. And because we defined that our project is called Master Project, um, we can go ahead and see that this is where all of our traces and essentially all of our data will land. So I've ran it a couple of times and I've even run eval. So this is kind of the end state of where we want to eventually get by the end of this video um, as well. But for right now, we can go ahead and see that um, this is what a fresh trace will look like. So this is the exact same question um, that I just asked. And here is the exact same input that we have just been given. And so um, when I click into this, I can get this like hierarch hierarchy view of exactly what's happening. So this is the... Um, the root span for the actual agent, and it is a span kind of agent. And underneath this, it'll be all of our other spans. So these are the ones for each of our tools. Um, and then these are like the LM calls for basically like putting together um, what you need to pass into the rule, I mean, to the tool, as well as what are the results of the actual tool itself. And so I can actually go ahead and go back in to my agent and just ask it a couple more questions. Um, just so that we have a little bit more data before we go ahead and run our evals. Okay, and so I basically just added um, a couple more traces in. I just asked um, the agent a couple more suggestions and questions, and so I have some more data in my application. Now we can go ahead and actually switch back to our evals um, and talk about how we're adding evaluations on top of these traces. So I have this file called evals.typescript that uses Phoenix evals and Phoenix spans to then run, um, we're going to use LLM based evals over the existing traces that we have. So at the very top, I import a couple of things. Um, and so essentially like the create classification um, evaluator is what we're using to actually create our evals. We're using OpenAI as our judge model. So um, I'm also going to go ahead and import that. And then lastly, to actually run the evals, um, as in like to get the data down and then push the data back up into Phoenix, we're going to use get spans as well as log span annotation. So get spans gets the spans um, from my trace project. And then log span annotations is after you run evals and now those spans have an eval or annotation data attached to it, we can go ahead and push it back up into um, Phoenix. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I set my model, my LLM is a judge, my judge model. I actually go ahead and set my prompts. And so we're actually running two different evals in this application. One is for our tools. So is the tool working correctly? Um, if it was given an input, did the tool um, give a correct output? And then also we're writing a, a agent goal, com goal completion prompt. So. Is it actually getting the input and the output? Is the output completing what the input is asking for? So I think this is more so um, maybe better used if the input is really complicated. So if I say, um, give me a comedy movie and it gives me comedy movies, then the goal is achieved. If I say, give me a comedy movie um, that has a certain actor in it, right? Um, then maybe it will give me comedy movies. So it fulfills kind of half of the goal, but um, it some of those movies don't have that actor in it, then um, I wouldn't have met my, my, my target goal for what the question was asking. And so that's kind of how this eval um, could take place in kind of a more real life um, or real world scenario as well. And for both of these, um, the labels are really simple. It's just correct or incorrect or completed or incomplete. And so basically inside my main function now moving forward, I am going to go ahead and start by reading my environment variables, right? So I know where to get my data, of course, right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and actually pull out my span. So here we are using the get spans function itself. I'm going to go ahead and filter for just the tool spans themselves because I want to run my um, correctness eval on only the tool span. So I can go ahead and find... Um, which spans are tools. Once I get those, um, I can extract my inputs and outputs just for what I actually need to put into my um, prompt that I had defined. Then I'm going to actually define my evaluator. So I took the prompt and now I'm just actually creating like an evaluator itself. This is like I said, from the Phoenix evals library. 
and then we can go ahead and actually evaluate it um, and just see what the results are. We'll push the results um, as well, and then we will eventually, yeah, right here, we will log the annotations back up into um, Phoenix itself. And so by the end of the step, I have a list of test cases that are like for this tool, here is the input and the output. Once I have the data, I create my evaluator and then I run um, my actual evaluator to give a label, a score, as well as an explanation. And so if you really want to take it a step further, you can do something like this where um, you can kind of compute like a simple pass rate and see how you can eventually turn your evals into some sort of guardrails as well. So anyways, like I said, I convert um, those span annotations and then I write them back to Phoenix. And I'm basically going to do the exact same thing coming down um, with the root spans, um, which are all going to be my agent span themselves. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing of I'm creating um, a new evaluator. Where is it? Right here. Create my new evaluator and then I'm going to evaluate it um, and then again push the spans back up. So... Now that we're here, we can actually go ahead and run our evals. So I'm just going to run npm run eval. And then when we go back to Phoenix, we should be able to see um, how our evals are logged. So here I am back in Phoenix. I can reload the page, but it already loaded up. Um, and now we have our evals. So in total, we have some really quick metrics at the top here, just um, at a quick glance to see how well our application is doing. So we can see that um, out of all the tool calls and all of these traces, which we have 13 traces, um, we can see that our tools are correct 95% of the time. And then in terms of our goal, goal completion, it's only accurate or it only completed the goal um, 26 or 76% of the time. And so now that we see these metrics, now I can go in and actually see what's going on. So when I click here, um, this question is, what is the best Disney princess movie that I should watch? And then we can go and see the answers are not Disney princesses. Um, yeah, Puss in Boots is definitely not a Disney princess. And so we can go and set, go ahead and see um, in our annotations tab, we want to go ahead and see exactly what's happening. We can see that it did not complete our goal. And the explanation for it was just that the agent's responses provides recommendations for animated movies, but not specifically for the best Disney princess movie. So I'm not exactly sure why it went into animated movies when I asked for Disney princesses, but now that I know that this is a common fail, I know that there's something in my application that I need to go back and reassess. So going through these again, um, I can also click on, oh yeah, I can also click on my tools. So each of my tools um, also have an annotation here as well. So I can go ahead and go to my movie selection or my um, explanation or my um, reviewer tool or my preview, we can go and see that they are correct or incorrect. And so that'll basically transpire against all of these um, 13 traces. We'll have um, evals for all of them. So that's kind of the main idea here um, that we have set. So this one's incorrect. It's a reviewer tool. Um, why is a reviewer tool incorrect? It provides a sort of list of movies with reviews and ratings, which is not with the input request so this is our disney princess example i think or no this is i'm sad what movie should i watch to cheer me up and i guess the reviewer tool um provided a sorted list which is not exactly what the input requests so now i know that there's something wrong within my tool itself so if you want to take this a step further you can actually run evals on each of these tools specifically so there will be like a reviewer tool eval a movie selector tool eval that's maybe a little bit more um well defined for each evals use case or each tool's use case um and yeah so that might be like a next step that you can take here Another step that you can take here is now that I'm looking at these, I have a couple failed um, examples of um, I have a couple failed examples here of um, where the goal was not met. So I can go ahead and add these in to a data set. And then when I add them into a data set, I can go ahead and run experiments on them um, or just take it a step further, basically. And so that is pretty much it. Um, to recap, we set up Open in France auto instrumentation um, to send our master agent uh, traces into Phoenix. We ran the agent a couple of times, saw the traces in Phoenix, and then we wrote and ran evals that evaluates our tool correctness as well as our agent goal completion.
So like I said, from here, there's a couple of different ways to take it, but I think this is a good starting point um, for if you have a master agent and you just want to um, set up some observability and evaluation for it. That's all I had for you today. Um, if you found this helpful and you're working with agents, you'll definitely want to try plugging um, Mastra into Phoenix and layering on evals like this. Thanks for watching.